As they took their first steps on the warm sands of Inverness, Nova Scotia, Scottish settlers began to nurture their newly born home. Satisfied with raising crops and animals for their needs, they did not involve themselves in exporting or commercial enterprises. The land that made up the rugged western coast of Cape Breton Island had a tremendous wealth through its unspoiled scenery and down-to-earth people. It was a peaceful and low-key life with little drama. However, this way of life would come to a halt. Tides would shift after the discovery of coal in 1863. Bootleg mining had taken place on the shores with people using it to heat their homes during the frigid winters. The self-sufficient pioneer could hardly perceive the transformation that would soon alter their lifestyle and landscape forever. It wasn't long after word spread about the quality of coal in Broadco when a flamboyant foreign coal speculator arrived on its shores and bought the coal fields for $62,500. When coal was discovered in the area, it started to bring a new life to a very small agrarian community. And then along comes in 1888, uh, William Penn Hussey. Hussey was a man of excessive weight who rode on a large white horse dressed in cowboy regalia with a six-gallon hat and two pistols dangling from each side of his gun belt. Originally from North Berwick, Maine, self-described uh, tramp, hobo, uh, in his younger years noted as being quite a prankster. Left home when he was 18 to work in mines in California. Hussey was a talker. Uh, he was used to talking and he was used to selling his product in the United States. And he could talk around reams of the people in Brown Cove at the time. They were in awe of his skills and of him and of his money. Hussey, as a knowledgeable coal developer, soon realized the quality and potential of the Broad Cove fields, but there were major obstructions 